Today I want to talk about a problem that was taken from All Russian Olympiad in Informatics regional stage and the problem was B on that tour. Uh, so usually I solve B from that stage pretty quickly, but with this problem it took me around half an hour, I think. So what was this strange problem? Strange problem that took me so long to, to solve, despite being uh, supposedly simple. If you want to read the statement, you can pause the video. I will tell it myself. So, we have a book, the pages are numbered from starting from 1. And we surely know that the first k pages are not containing text, so they are illustrations. Then, after those k pages, some contain text, but we don't know how many pages there are, and we don't know how many pages contain text, we only know that uh, the sum of indexes or numbers of those pages that contain text is equal to s. So all that we are given is this number k and this number s. The question is, what is the minimum possible amount of pages that do not contain text? So not the possible amount of pages, but the minimal possible amount of pages that do not contain text. The first idea that came to my mind is to simplify this problem by focusing only on one type of answer. This is a very, very common approach in competitive programming. So, for example, like the first obvious observation we can make, we can only focus on those type of this distribution, these answers, where the last page contains text. If the last page does not contain text, then we can cut it, cut the end of this answer, cut this part, and improve the answer. So the sum is still yes, and the number of pages that do not contain text became less. And how further can we change our answer? And by changing it, I don't mean that we need to decrease the amount of pages that don't contain text any further. I mean that maybe we can change it a little so it becomes more structurized. So after some time, I figured out that you can always look at the answer only in such, in such form, where all the text pages are going in a row with one possible gap. So the final distribution will look somewhat like this. Those are k empty pages, and all the text pages are located in the end with one gap, with gap of one page. If you want the proof, here's the proof. Suppose the text has more than one gaps, or more than one gap. So let's suppose it looks somewhat like this. The gap can be, it can be a single gap, but with width of two or more, or it can be multiple gaps. So in both cases, we can take the first T that stands before the gap, and the last T that stands after the gap. And we can move this one here, move this one here. The sum didn't change, but if you take the sum of the squares of numbers of pages containing text, the sum of the squares just decreased, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. So if you keep the sum of two numbers, but move them closer to, to each other, then the sum of their squares decreases. Yeah. And this means that we can do the separation, and each time the sum of squares will decrease, so we can't do it infinite amount of times. So after some amount of operations, of such operations, the answer will look like uh, as I described. There will not be two gaps anymore. And possibly we have even improved the, our answer. Like here, we moved t, the last t here, so 
the last page now becomes empty and we can get rid of it. So we have might even approve our answer, but not make it worse. So I've spent some time thinking on that form of answer. But to describe such an answer, you need three variables. For example, a max for the maximal page number that we use, g for the position of the gap, and let's say i for the number of illustrations, or pages that do not contain text, so the variable that we want to minimize. Only with these three variables you can describe such an answer. But did we simplify the problem, or did we make it even worse? Because with these three variables, it's a complete chaos. Of course, you can write out some inequalities, but trust me, there's nothing good in there. Let's try a completely different approach. If we come to writing out inequalities in any case, then why do not write it from the start? Let's just introduce two variables, i and t. Two variables is enough of a mess already, because let's say I want to minimize i. I know that the constraints are very big, so I suppose I need a binary search or some formula. But let's suppose binary search. For which t should I check for i? For example, for which t such i even exists? That there exists some at least one such distribution with the given properties. Let's think if we would run binary search. If I would know i and t exactly, how could I check? Can I check if there is such a distribution with this specific i and t? Well, of course, i shall be at least k, but other than that, how can I be sure that there's, there is a possible distribution of text pages with such i and t. Well, I need to be sure that such sum is achievable, right? But maybe let's dive from another angle. Which sums are achievable with such i and t? Let's draw such a picture. First t pages are illustrations, and overall we have i plus t pages. i plus t. And somewhere here, y, r, t, text pages. What are the possible sums? Well, of course, the minimal possible sum you will achieve if you take the first t pages from this segment as the text pages. And the maximum possible sum is, of course, if you take the last t pages as the text pages. And it is pretty clear that all the intermediate sums are also achievable. Uh, let's prove it. Let's start with the minimal possible sum. And let's move the last text page by one. So we move it here, then we move it here by one page at a time. And until it reaches the limit. And when it reaches the limit, we start moving the second largest page. We move it here, then here, until it reaches the limit again. Every time on every step, we've increased the sum by one, and it made all the way from the minimum possible sum to the largest possible sum. So in the end, all the pages will end up here. So of course, all the intermediate numbers are also possible. And that's very good, because now we can just write inequalities. S must be no less than the sum of numbers is this uh, in this range, which is, let's say, uh, let's see, k plus 1, k plus 2, etc., k plus t, right? So, if you sum up all those numbers, then every k will sum up into k times t, and 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus etc., t is t times t plus 1 over 2. And s must be no more than the sum of numbers in this range, which is i plus 1, etc., i plus t. So, in a similar manner, 
it will be i times t plus t times t plus 1 over 2. But what do we see? We see that this expression does not contain i, which is very good, because it means that we have a strict limit on t, which does not depend on i at all. So we just, this part of the condition, it just does not depend on i. So we can just choose a t which satisfies this condition, and then for a given t, choose the minimal i that satisfies this condition. But the second part is very easy, as is the first part. The first part just says that t must be no more than some limit, because this is an increasing function on t. So t must just must be no more than some limit. And with these words, I can just forget about that part whatsoever. If I just determine what is this limit, I can just forget about this part, uh, that part altogether. And just focus on this part. So, okay, suppose I know the t, then the minimum possible i is just a linear expression for i. So you just move this uh, part of expression to the left and divide everything over t. And you, you get a explicit limit for i, lower bound, okay, for i. And moreover, you see that the bigger t becomes, the lower limit you will get for i. So the bigger the t, the easier it is for i to overcome this limit. This means that we indeed need to maximize t in the first place. We need to find the maximal t for which this part holds true. And after it we can just find i using a simple formula. Find the minimal i. That's it. Let's implement this. Um, this idea. Okay, read k and read s. Now I will do binary search. Of course, uh, I can find the largest possible t that satisfies this condition using quadratic equations, solving the quadratic inequality, to be precise. Uh, but I am I can't be bothered to do it, so I will just use binary search. So I need to find the last integer number for which something is true, which means that I need to set L as some number for which it is still true, this, this uh, statement, and R set to some number for which it is already not true. So for which number, for which T, this is surely true. Of course, for zero. For zero, it's also always true. And for which number, it's surely not true. Well, I could say 10 to the power of 18, but uh, this will lead to overflow, so I will use uh, a billion. For a billion, this will be already much larger than all possible s. Okay, then, while the amount of candidates for the largest possible t is more than 1, take the middle candidate and check that candidate. If for this number as a t, the statement is true. So k times mid plus mid or, uh, times mid plus 1 over 2. If it is no more than s, then I move L here, otherwise I move R here. So I move, so R, L is always uh, some number for which it is true, and R is always some number for which it is not true. So in the end, when they will meet, L and R, uh, the answer, the largest possible T for which it is true, it will be L. So I will just write like this. And now let's find the smallest I for such T, which will be the smallest possible i altogether at the same time.
let's just rewrite this formula. So S is no more than I times T plus T times T plus one over two. Move this expression to the left and divide everything over T. I mean, divide everything by t. Okay, divide everything by t. But as i is integer, and this is a lower limit for i, we can seal it. So round it up. To round up a fraction, a over b, I can just write a plus b minus 1. Uh, integer division b. So here I just need to add t minus 1 to the numerator. So i is at least that integer number. So this is our answer. This is the lowest possible i. Let's just output it. Let's run sample. 1, 8, we get, we get 3. Okay, that's it. Okay, submit. Sorry for Russian page. Yeah, I get accepted. But only then I realized that I, all this time, I ignored the constraints. The constraint on S is rather small. It's not an arbitrary number. If you would pay attention, you would guess that the constraint on S is made so that square root of S is fast enough to be a uh, time complexity for our algorithm. So it's pretty obvious that square root of s is the largest possible amount of text pages. After all, it's a very famous fact that the sum of t different natural numbers is of course at least t times t plus 1 over t. So just with this fact, you can understand that t is no more than square root of s times some constant, of course, but anyway. If you just pay attention, you could just run over all possible t's, just from 1 to, for example, 3 million or 10 million, whatever. No, 10 million may be too large, but 2 million will be enough, okay? And for every possible t, you would use this formula. So thank you for watching and I remind you that I give private lessons on competitive programming. My rate is $25 per hour if you need my assistance. My contacts are in the description. Okay, thanks a lot, bye.